Hey guys, welcome back to part two. Okay, so if you're just getting here to watch this video, this is how to this is a video on how to shim the armature in your airsoft motor. Um, so if you're just getting here and you want to know how to shim the magnets, and you want to go back to part one and hear all the stuff on that, not just about shimming the magnets, you should go to that video and check it out, watch the whole thing, and uh, we go over some good stuff. So. Um, if you just want to know how to shim an armature, this is the video for you as well. So we're going to get on to that and we will get to it. Alright, so we have, we're trying to build a Franken Torque motor. So I got my 32 TPA armature here. I got my Matrix Magnum can. I got, I got everything I need. So like I said, um, or like we're going to say, what you're going to need is you're going to need just your motor, some plastic shims, stuff like this that you find inside the motor can and more than likely if you have a 32 TPA armature you got some shims on it and you have the armature that you just took out of this can so you have some shims on that so take them off and put them in a small little pile and you can use them um, so alright let's get down to it I'm going to take off the plastic shim on this armature real quick though I don't need it alright so shimming an armature okay how do you do it a lot of people ask that question and I have to explain it because it's a big, big thing and I hate doing it all the time. So from now on, I'm just going to link this video to people. So how you shim an armature. Now, a lot of people shim armatures and they just kind of drop it in and they just kind of like put the cap on the end bell and they just spin it, see how much space they have and they go from there. That's not how you shim an armature per se. Uh, yes, that shims it, but that's not how you do it. How you do it is this. And let me explain the whole concept here. Imagine we have our motor can. This is our motor can. It's invisible. We're going to pretend. And actually, let me use some ferrous magnets so they don't stick to everything. This explanation. Um, gotta have some laying around somewhere. One second. I'm just going to take out these ferrous magnets out of this uh, ferrous can, so bear with me for a second here. I didn't think I was going to do this. I know, I know. Lazy, lazy, but oh well. Deal with it. This is my video. And those are glued in there. What do you know? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Oh well. There it is. Stuck to the metal device. So I'm just getting out these magnets so I can demonstrate better. With less powerful magnets because neodymium magnets are incredibly powerful and are difficult to demonstrate with because they're so big and they're so strong. Okay, I've got the bottom now. Okay, those are not budging. Maybe I can find something that aren't stuck in there. Sweet. Alrighty, we got it. Okay, sorry about that. Anyway, imagine we have a motor can right here, but it's invisible. We have our magnets like this. And those are pretty strong too, never mind. Okay, so we'll do it on the ground like this. Okay, so our magnets are like this, inside the motor can, but facing like this towards each other. Okay, so the armature rests in the metal, right? Now, these magnets, 
They don't necessarily hug it like that, but they hug around it and they sit around it. Now, shimming an armature involves getting that armature to where it is in the middle of both those magnets. So it has space above it, magnet space right here, and space right here. Okay, now what that does, and the reason why we try to do this, is because we want the armature to be around the magnets as much as possible, as close as possible. That's why we shim the magnets closely. That's why we shim the magnets, or shim the armature to the magnets like this. Because we want the most and the most possible energy transfer to that armature possible. We want as mo as much energy and the most smooth path for that energy to travel. It's just easier, and it's easier on the motor. Helps it not to heat up as fast, and it just keeps it running cool and at peak performance. Okay, so how do you do this though? You do this by taking your magnets, putting them in the can, seeing where your armature is in there, putting a couple shims on it, and leveling it up. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna do the ferrous magnets because they're weaker and they're just easier to deal with. I don't know if they'll fit in this can though. Yeah, they will. Maybe they won't. Okay, we'll use neodymium magnets, only because they fit better though. Alright. Okay, so let's put our magnets in. And this is what you're going to do. Do this process. You put your magnets in, don't worry about the clamps, those little V-clamps, we won't worry about those yet. That's the, that's the finished product. Just because it's, they're so difficult to get out. So put your magnets in. And you're going to need to take them out again, so I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that. Okay, so our magnets are in. Put your armature in. Now with no shims. And see where it sits. Okay, so this armature, when it's completely down, pressed down in other words, the magnets are just fine right here. So there's, there's plenty of space there for the armature to sit in. And then there's plenty of space right here. So what we're gonna do is it looks like we're just gonna put all the magnets on top. Or not all the magnets, all the shims on top because we can hold it down. Now, we're gonna do that to a point though. We're not gonna put all of them on top. We're gonna put some of them on top, looks like most of them, and then a little bit on the bottom, kind of level it out. Kind of hold it there, I guess you could say. Now, the reason we don't put them all on top and call it a day is because this bearing in here, this bearing, you wanna give it the most contact possible on the axle. So when you put it in, it's got a good amount of contact on that axle and it kind of holds it more. Imagine if you had this sector gear, and this is just the G&G crappy sector gear, combat machine style. Imagine if you had this bushing, and you have this sector gear, and you have it sitting like this. Okay, see that's good contact. That's good, because most of the axle, if not all, is in the bushing. Now imagine if it was all the way risen up and it's just barely making contact. Imagine what that does. Imagine this right here. This is our axle, and this is our bushing. So it's good. There's a top portion, and then there's a bottom portion. But if I have it all the way up top, more pressure. It's like, it'd be like this. It's like all the way up on your bat, and it's pulling it down. Because it puts more pressure, and it makes it more, makes it easier for the axle to break and bend. That's one of the things in shimming that people don't also don't understand. Shimming axles to bushings and all that kind of stuff. That's just an example. Now, that puts on in bearings. The bearing normally breaks before the axle does on the gear, unless your axle's really crappy like G, &G axles. But that's what happens, and that's what happened here. If there isn't enough contact on the axle to bearing, it will break the bearing under high loads. Now, this rarely happens, but when it does happen, that's exactly why it happens. And uh, Kelly Colburn, um, one of my friends that is a tech, um, and makes MOSFETs and all that stuff, that's what people know him for, really, and is really awesome DSG. But uh, he told me that he broke a bearing in a uh, uh, motor. And more than likely, that's probably why that broke. So um, that's, I'm just saying, like, the motor probably came stock like that, and that's what happened. But more than likely, that's why it broke. And plain and simple. So we're going to fix that problem, and we're going to tune it to where it won't happen. And if it breaks, then we know it was just a part problem. So we have peace in mind, basically, and high efficiency. So we're going to shim our uh, armature. Now, I'll just keep it in there, keep the magnets in there while I shim, be mainly because um, I want to see where I'm at. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some shims to the bottom. Since most of these shims are about the same size, we'll add two to the bottom. 
and two to the top. Well, actually, let's make it three. I want to see where we set. And remember, only use plastic shims. Now, if you use metal shims, then on these little, on the commutator right here, see these little lines right here that kind of separate each one? The brushes pass over these, and they kind of cycle, and they do cycle. But if you have metal shims, you can get arcing, and that's bad. We don't want that. So we're going to avoid arcing and not use metal shims. Plastic or nothing. Okay, so let's put our armature in. We got two shims on the bottom, and we got three shims up top. So let's see where we sit with this. Okay, let's put our end bell back on and screw it down. Well, actually, maybe I'll put this, this clamp in first. Wrong side. And where is my pinion? There it is. Put our pinion on and test how it spins. Okay, I can feel up and down movement. That's what you want to go for. You want to hear this? And actually, let me get a better grip on it or something, but you can hear it. And you can feel it up and side to side movement. Now with bearings like are on this thing, the motor bearings, you kind of want to leave a good amount of space for them. Just like how you shim bearings, you want to leave about 0 .08, but I know with plastic shims that's very difficult to do. And that is about right, but we're going to take it down and check it again. Another thing you're going to want to look for when you shim, this clamp right here that holds the end bell down, um, it, while it's not necessary to have this, it's good to have it, but on Coyote armatures particularly, they use a lot of epoxy, that's what that blue junk is on the armature, to hold and balance the armature. So this epoxy right here, if it's shimmed too high up, it'll knock into this. And that's what happened with my FT at first, with my Frank and Torque motor, my DSG. Um, it was messing up like that, and I was like, oh, why is it doing that? So I took it apart and found out that that was the problem, found wearing on the epoxy here. So I shimmed it a little differently, and voila, fixed the problem. Okay, so we have almost perfect amount of movement, but I'm going to add a very thin shim to the top and see what happens. Okay. This is a very thin shim. And also, I forgot to explain this. If, and since these plastic shims are very, and it just fell off, are very inconsistent, what you can do, and they're very thick, what you can do is you can take a, um, you can take a file or sandpaper and shave the plastic shim down. Shave it down to a thinner dimension so that it's more precise. Think about it like that. That's kind of cool. And that's too tight. So we have it shimmed just right. Let me check this out again though. I think something might go one. Got lost. Yep, there it is. Hear that barely any up and down movement? You can't hear it, you probably won't be able to hear it. But there's barely any up and down movement. And that's what we want. We want just barely any up and down movement so that it stays within the, the, uh, the parameters of the magnets and we get our good contact like we want with the bearings and we um, get it so we get it loose enough to where it's not super hard for the armature to turn because that will drastically slow down speed if it's really tight. And um, yeah, that's we don't want that. So. We shim the we now we've shimmed the magnets and we've shimmed the armature. So, what else is there to do? Well, we're gonna take out the magnets and we're gonna kind of test out our uh, shimming and see how well we did without the magnets. Just gonna see how well it spins alone without magnets. Just a little something that I like to do to kind of hear it working. Yet again, having trouble with magnets here. Gosh. 
strong magnets are strong. Okay, cool. I saw a battery. I can talk for a little bit after this video. Freaking magnets. And fast forward if I'm just working on magnets, there's no point in watching me try to work a magnet out unless you want to watch me fail and all kinds of other stuff, which, you know, why not? There we go. There's our magnet, thankfully. And the last one, which shouldn't be that hard since it's the last one. Goodness. I wish uh, motor cans weren't magnetic. Not the magnets, the motor cans. The magnets need to be magnetic. Duh. That's out. So that's good to go. Okay, so we just got our can here. That's what we want. We want our can in here and we want to put our armature in now. So put your armature in. And we'll be able to put this, the, the clamp in because the uh, magnets aren't in. The clamp rests on the magnets. So we'll test it out. One second. Sorry about that. I had something I had to take care of. Anyway, we got our end bell on. We have the can and no magnets. And we have the armature. Barely any up and down movement. That's what we want. Okay, so now we're going to test spin it. See how well it spins and nice and quiet it is? It's exactly what we want. Alright, so... That is a success. Now, that is how you build and tune a Franken torque motor. Sorry if it was lengthy, but I wanted to kind of do the process in front, up front, and kind of explain it. And uh, as we go, if we had any problems, I would address them. Just like the magnets being too thick for the any more tape and any more shim, basically. So, what else can you do? Well, what you can do, if you really want to really get in depth and do something that I can't do on camera, you can polish this commutator up. Just take a metal polishing thing, the wheel, put some polishing compound on it and polish it. Now, that'll be like nice and golden when you're done. I don't have one around me that's polished up. But the one in my Franken is nice and polished up, but it's probably a little worn down now since it's been through a 14.8. Um, but you can do that, you can polish them up, you can even just like take your hand and wipe off the junk on them sometimes. But polishing up really does help. Um, it just helps with efficiency, just like everything else really. And I like to do it just because I like shiny things. And the next thing you can do, and if you really want to get in depth, is you can take this armature and you can balance it. Now an easy way to balance an armature is to just put it between two objects and just see if it rotates. Like, let me find something, oh, there's got to be something that I have. Um, they got to be two things that are the same size, like this. Okay, so I have two of these packages, these little dividers here. I set my armature in between. It can't be up on top of anything. So. Okay. okay. See how the armature rotates like that? Kind of weird how it rotates. That means it's not. Well, what, these packages are rotated. Hold on. Okay, never mind. Maybe I won't be able to do it on here because these, these things are uh, they're curved. But um, anyway, you can put it between two things, like two sticks, like well, 
two staves that are the same size or you can put it on like a vise and just see if it kind of goes back and forth if if it leans a certain way there's more weight on that side and you can take off some weight by taking a drill bit and drilling into it and then testing it um, that's a cheap way of doing it. You can also buy a machine that does that kind of tells you what to do, where to put a hole, where not to put a hole. Because um, I know this blue crap on here is really annoying. But uh, that's what you can do. And um, it's really most you can do unless you want to wind this yourself. Um, but I, that takes a lot of explanation and everything what to do. So I might make a video on how to do that. I just don't know. Um, really lengthy videos I try to avoid. Uh, mainly because of camera, camera battery and just stuff. I don't know. But anyway, that's how you do it. Um, this is how you do it. So any questions, if you want to make another guide on something or any critiques, this is really my first guide to doing something on camera. So any critiques are more than welcome. Um, any recommendations as to what I should do, like AOE guides or air seal guides or how to put a version to a gearbox together guide, something like that. Um, you know, feel free to suggest. So um, that's it, guys, and uh, good luck building your FTs. Any questions on it, PM me or leave a comment below and on Facebook or on YouTube. I'll see you guys later.